What is up, people? Welcome to the sixth and final unit of macro, so let's get after it, you know, right after you smash that like button, if you'd be so kind. So in this unit, we finally open up the economy and acknowledge that, yeah, there's more than one country, there's more than one economy out there, and that we trade with people who live in other countries. For most of this year, we've either implicitly or sometimes explicitly assumed that we're in a closed economy that doesn't engage in trade with anybody outside of our own economy. Now, obviously that's not true, but it made some of what we did earlier in the year a little bit simpler. This unit is all about open economies, where international trade and financial investment occur. In other words, people are free to buy stuff made in other countries, and they're also able to invest and buy financial assets from other countries as well. This unit includes things like imports and exports, foreign currency exchange, and financial investments in other countries. We'll start with some basic accounting, just measuring stuff going in and out of the country, and then categorizing it depending on what it is more specifically, under the broad heading of balance of payment accounts, which summarize transactions between people from different countries. By the way, I don't know if you noticed how I said that, but I didn't say transactions between different countries. It's a subtle difference, but it's important. Countries aren't people. They don't trade. People trade. And sometimes people who live in one country trade with people who live in a different country. And that's what the balance of payments reflects. Within the balance of payments, there are two accounts, the current account and the capital and financial account that represent the different types of transactions. Now, the current account includes transactions that do not create a liability. In other words, transactions that are paid for and completed currently. It includes three types of transactions, imports and exports, international transfers, and factor income. With imports and exports, we're talking about goods and services. Imports mean buying something made in another country, and exports are selling something made domestically to someone in another country. And we can use net exports to show the difference between exports and imports. Positive net exports mean that exports are greater than imports, and negative net exports mean that exports are less than imports. International transfers refer simply to somebody sending money to a person in another country. For example, maybe sending money back home to their family. And we learned about factor income back in Unit 2. It just refers to the various ways we earn income in the form of rent, wages, interest, and profits. And in this section, we're specifically thinking about the income that happens to be earned in another country. So again, each of these types of transactions are included as part of the current account. On tests, there's usually two main things you'll be asked. One is just to be able to identify what type of transactions affect the current account, like we just discussed. And the other is to identify whether a particular transaction would increase or decrease the current account balance. The current account is not always balanced, where money flowing in is exactly equal to money flowing out, but rather often shows a surplus or a deficit. To determine whether it's in surplus or deficit, follow the money. When more money is going out than coming in, the current account is in a deficit. On the other hand, when more money is coming in than going out, the current account is in surplus. With that in mind, a country's current account balance will increase as a result of an increase in net exports, an increase in international transfers coming into the country, or an increase in rent, wages, interest, or profits earned abroad. On the other hand, a country's current account balance will decrease if there's a decrease in net exports, an increase in international transfers going out of the country, or an increase in rent, wages, interest, or profits paid to people in other countries. Within the current account, there's another measurement known as the trade balance, which is the difference between exports and imports. When exports are greater than imports, there's a trade balance surplus, and when imports are greater than exports, there's a trade balance deficit. I'm gonna get on my soapbox for a minute because I believe there is rampant misunderstanding of some of the terms I've just gone over. I actually hate the concept of measuring bilateral trade balances in the first place. The US has trade surpluses with some countries and it has trade deficits with others. This is no big deal, but the news media loves to report on trade balances and politicians love to talk about it as if it matters in some real meaningful way. And they sometimes promise to fix it as if a trade deficit is a bad thing. But think about what a trade deficit actually means. It means that imports from another country are greater than our exports to that country. The term trade deficit is extremely misleading. This isn't a deficit as we often use the term to indicate that somebody's in debt. 
It literally just means that we bought more of their stuff than they bought of ours. The fact that the trade crosses political borders is irrelevant from an economic perspective. Now, I get that it can have political ramifications, but this is an economics class. And in economics, we understand that trade is mutually beneficial as long as both sides are free to say no. That principle is true whether it's trade between two people who live in the same house, the same city, different states, or different countries. Furthermore, a trade deficit actually indicates that people in that country are enjoying more stuff made in the other country than the other way around. People in the country with a surplus are getting more dollars, true, but people in the country with a deficit are getting more stuff. And getting stuff is kind of the whole point of having dollars in the first place. Just something to think about. Okay, awkward transition alert. Our second type of account is the capital and financial account, which is a record of international transactions that create a liability and includes transactions involving financial assets, such as stocks, bonds, currency, and ownership of companies. These transactions can be conducted by private individuals and businesses, as well as on behalf of governments and central banks. The capital and financial account can also be balanced in surplus or deficit. When financial inflows are greater than outflows, the capital and financial account is in surplus. And when financial outflows are greater than inflows, it's in a deficit. For example, if people in foreign countries are investing in this country's stock market or purchasing U.S. bonds, this increases the U.S.'s capital and financial account balance, and it decreases the balance of the capital and financial account in their home country. So the balance of payments includes both the current account and the capital and financial account. And guess what? While each of them can individually be in surplus or deficit, taken together, they'll be balanced. In other words, the current account plus the capital and financial account equals zero. Or we could say that the current account equals the opposite of or negative capital and financial account. This is actually really important and goes to further disabuse people of the myths I discussed earlier. If a country has a current account deficit, it necessarily has a capital and financial account surplus. Say the US has a current account deficit with Canada. All this really means is that Americans prefer buying Canadian goods while Canadians prefer to buy American financial assets. It isn't as if, as some allege, that money is lost forever when it leaves the US. It comes right back, but in a different form. It's nothing to get in a huff about or to lose sleep over. All right, that's it for this episode of Mythbusters. Oh, wait, wrong show. Well, anyway, until next time, this has been a La Money production. Thanks again for watching. Please hit that like button. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Be sure to check out the description to get links to the answers to these practice questions, as well as the great study aids I've made for you, like AP Macro in 250 words, and I will see you in the next video.